So this is the cosmetic powder I'm going to show you how to make today. It's actually very roomy and it's very simple to make. I love the shape of the curve at the top. I think it's something rather unusual and of course it's fully lined in there as well. So I think you'll find it useful. I think you'll find it very simple to make and I also think you'll find it lots of fun as well. So let's get sewing. I've got two pieces of outer fabric and two pieces of lining, each measuring 12 inches across by 11 inches deep. Now I'm using quite a lightweight polyester, which is meant as a dressmaking fabric, which is normally quite fluid and twist very easily. So I've put Valiseline H640 onto the wrong side of the outer fabric. And not only does this give your bag or your fabric a little bit of stability and substance, it also stops the fabric from twisting. So that's the outside of my bag. For the lining, I've used the same type of fabric, but I didn't want the weight of the H640 on the lining. So this time, I've used a lightweight interfacing. This is um, H200, which is the kind of weight of interfacing that you'd use in collars and cuffs and pockets if you're dressmaking. So all this has done is to stop the fabric from twisting so much and having so much drape. But it just goes to prove that fabrics that you don't expect that you'll be able to make something like a bag out of you can do if you stabilize it first so those are my two outer and my two lining pieces I also have my zip and a piece of fabric that I'm going to use for extending the zip so which means that I can cut off those metal stoppers on the end of the zip and don't have a risk of my needle hitting them and breaking and it also means that the zip doesn't form straight into the seam I've got a piece of fabric in there which makes it easier to put together but the first thing that we need to do is to make the top of these pieces round and I've got quite an easy way for you to do that if you own one of these which is a seam gauge now they're not all alike, but with this seam gauge, it has a little hole in the end here. So as you can see, as I move the bar up and down, tiny hole just here. And on the back here is a circular piece where it's got little tiny spikes in it. Now this means that I can use this as a template to draw circles and to draw semicircles. I want a six inch semicircle because my fabric is 12 inches wide. So I've moved the bar right up as far as it'll go to the top and I can make a template on a scrap piece of paper first of all. So you need a pen with quite a long nib, hold the spiky end down, put your pen in the top, and then you can simply draw the arc shape. Now you could draw that directly onto your fabric, or like here, you could make a template first of all. So if you've got a fabric that's darker in colour, like some of mine is, a template might be the easier way to go. Don't usually use my fabric scissors for cutting fabric. It's a one-off. So now I can pin my template, my pattern, to the top of the fabric and then just cut around it. So I'm just going to go from the actual edge of the fabric and use the curve, the shape. You can see my fabric's very slightly wider than the template, but that's fine as long as it's symmetrical and all four pieces of fabric are cut to the same size. And then the pieces that I've cut, I can then use these as a template to cut my outer fabric. So I'll have four pieces of fabric all cut to exactly the same size. So let's put the lining and the outer pieces to one side for just a second and let's take care of the zip. So again, the zip, let's just trim that round there. That's better. The zip isn't going to go the whole length of the top. So 
So now we need to cut out the corner so that we can make the base square. So I'm going to cut a two inch corner from each section. So two inches across, two inches down from each one of the corners like so. And this is what's going to make the base, as I said, make base square. So it makes a nice deep um, makeup bag, cosmetic bag or notions pouch, whatever you're using these for. Um, and there we go. So there's plenty of room inside this bag. The base of the bag is actually going to measure three and a half inches across. So it's nice and deep. The same with this one. Put this across. And again. And then we'll need to do the same with the lining pieces. I can do those both together because they're not quite as thick. Putting interfacing on the back of dark fabric like this also means that you can see your pen lines when you're drawing, which helps. So again, two inch square cut from the base of each of these sections. Then we'll need to put the ends onto the zip. So the zip's going to go around here and I don't want it to go all the way into the seam as I said earlier and I don't want to sew over the metal stoppers so I'm going to chop them off. So I'm using a nylon zip, you can't do this with a metal zip as easily. And then I'll need to extend the zip so it comes all the way down to the seam here. Then I'll take the long strip of fabric, which I've actually cut into six inch strips. So these are two inches wide by six inches long. They're going to be far too long, but better too long and cut them down than working with smaller pieces of fabric or having them too short. Um, and these are going to be sewn onto the ends of the zip to extend it so that it'll go down into the seam. So let's do that first of all. So these don't have to be cut to the exact uh, size because we will be cutting them down. So we're going to pop one end of the zip in between two pieces of the fabric, right sides together. So the zip's trapped in, in between here and so straight across the end. And I'm just using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Not too important as long as it's consistent. Then I'm going to fold that back and just to hold it in place, I'm going to sew straight across the end here. So this panel is actually too wide and too long, but it's so much easier to do it this way and cut it down to size. Now at this end, I'm going to need the zip open when I'm putting this in between the two pieces of fabric. So just to secure that in place, I'm going to pop a little bit of glue from a glue pen for fabric, really importantly, just on the end of the zip. So that holds it together before I sew. And I'll do the same on this side. If you do say any of this glue on the outside of your fabric, it dries clear, but it can be wiped away as well and then sew straight across the end again. And then like before, let's fold this back, just finger crease it and top stitch. Now we're going to sew the zip around the top of the bag. You can see how much too long these are. That, that's absolutely fine. Um, so to enable the zip to curve and the seam to sit well, I'm just going to make little snips into the edge of the zip 
no further than halfway across because that's where my stitch line is going to be. But this means when this goes round in a curve, the edge of the zip or the zip tape is going to open up. So the seam will sit flatter. And we'll do this along both sides of the zip. Chop that thread off. And the same on this side. Now because I'm just using um, a semicircular shape, you could of course make this smaller if you wanted to. Um, half the size, so if you have a piece of fabric that's um, six inches across, you could make a really small, almost like a purse shape or a larger bag and a smaller one to go with it which would make nice travel bags so once you understand the technique and the way that this has been made it makes it a lot easier to kind of um, adapt it and, and make your own make it a bit more personal you could put some applique on here so do that at this stage before you start sewing anything together and do be aware of the sides and the base because these are going to join together in a square like so um, I'll show you from here. So that will be the shape of your bag. So if you are going to put any embroidery or applique, make sure it's kept in the center, not too close to the edge or the base, so it doesn't kind of disappear into the rest of the work. And I'm just going to fold this in half and make a tiny snip in the center point. I'm going to fold my zip in half so that the two ends of the tabs at the end meet and just do the same here. And then right sides together so the zip tab is facing down. Let's close that over. Let's match up the center points here and we'll have a few pins in there. match up the raw edges of the fabric to the edge of the zip and pin that all the way around. Now when you come to the end of the zip, we could actually trim that down now actually to the same width as the zip. Let's do that on both sides. You could use your rotary cutter ruler and mat for a really accurate cut if you prefer. And then let's just pin the rest of this through. I remember pins are rather large, but I do like using pins like this rather than smaller ones. I found with the flower heads, or you can get button heads and all kinds of different heads, um, I can see where they are. I like them long and kind of sticking out like this because um, I find them easier to pull out as I'm sewing, because I never sew over pins. And with having the different colored heads, it means if I drop them on the floor, I can see them. So I'm going to trim that back to the width of the zip, which should be about an inch wide. We'll trim the length off shortly. So let's line up the edges. And then we'll sew. See how much too long that is, but um, I'd rather work around larger, larger pieces of fabric than fiddly little pieces of fabric. You may prefer to put the zipper foot on your sewing machine. I don't normally tend to, to be honest, particularly this machine that has a very wide foot. So it sits over the top of the zip tape very well. And just very carefully sew around the curve. I think we need another little snip here just to open out the zip tape slightly and allow it to curve. This is actually creating the shape of the bag, so it's important that your stitches are nice and neat and your curve is nice and curvy.
when I come to the zip slider, I'm going to lift the foot right up out of the way, grab hold of that pull, move it out of the way. Leave the needle down as you do this, so then you can carry on sewing from the same point and you don't get a wobbly stitch line. So then we need to sew the second side of the outer bag to the opposite side of the zip. So just in the same way, let's find the center point here. Snip across, match these points together. And we'll sew just in the same way as we did before. And then these pieces of the zip extensions, we can trim down to the same size as the fabric. Now the lining needs to go on the opposite side of the zip tape to the outer bag. So I'm going to open up the zip now because I think that's going to make it easier. So we'll need to sew right sides together the lining to the outer section of the bag. So let's move the one side out of the way. I've marked the centre top again as previously. So let's pop a pin in there and then pin together all the way around. And again we need this side out of the way. and then sew all around here. I like to sew from the same side that I've just sewn so I can see where the stitch line is and I can follow that line. So that's what we're looking like from the right side out now. That's one side sewn in. And then we'll do the same with the second piece of lining. So again, let's turn that back again, which needs to go right sides together. So right sides together with this fabric means that this fabric is in the way. So let's just turn that over, line up those centre points again, pin it all the way round, to keep this out of the way and then we'll sew all the way around here and again I like to sew from this side because I can see where those stitches already are and I can go over the same stitch line.
So let's turn this the right side out now and see how we're looking. So you can start to see the shape of the bag taking shape. So we need to sew at the bottom and square the base. So the outer pieces need to be sewn right sides together. So let's flip this over again. So I've got outer pieces right sides together, lining pieces right sides together, and I'm going to sew all the way across the base here. And on the lining, I need to leave a turning gap. So I'll sew from the ends, leave a gap of about four or five inches in the center, and then carry on sewing. So this is the outer section. And then my lining section. Remember to leave that turning gap. I, I quite often forget, to be honest. But that's what you've got a quick unpick for. That'll happen a lot. Now we need to box the corners. So again, let's have the zip. Just make sure that's open. So this may seem a little bit fiddly, but it's, um, it's quite easy to do. So where the zip is in the center of the lining and the outer pieces, it forms like an H shape here. So we're going to take the outer fabric and pull open the corners. So the zip sits flat in the center and then do the same with the lining pieces. So ignore what's going on here. That'll feel a little bit bulky, but so that you have the outer pieces and the lining pieces all stretched out together like so. So make sure the seam is in the center of where the zip goes. Again, that's a little bit bulky, but we'll keep that out of the way. So I'll have a couple of pins in here to hold it in place. And we're going to sew straight across here. take out the pins. This may look a little bit untidy, but it, it doesn't matter. Let's trim that back to make it neat. And then we'll do the same with the second side. So just the same again. Pull out the outer pieces. Move this out of the way. Pull out the lining pieces like so. So both of those seams are sitting over the top of the zip. And we'll pin that in place. Don't worry about this looking like a knot. It'll all be fine when it's finished. So line up those edges. And sew straight across. Let's trim that back a little bit so it's not so bulky. Then we'll turn it the right side out. So through that turning gap that you left in the bottom of the lining, the whole thing is going to go through that little hole. So be patient. It'll take a while to feed it through. So initially, It'll all be inside out. I 
and I've got the hole across the bottom here which I need to sew over. So I'm going to make sure I'm only sewing through the lining section. So if you pull each side of the gap and just roll the edges of the fabric in and then sew straight across here. You can pin that if you like. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to sew it closed with my sewing machine. And then we'll turn this through to the right side and just press around here. So I just turn my little iron on, my ironing pad, and I'm just going to press it so that the zip is right on the outside seam. It's quite tricky to um, top stitch around here. You could do, you could have a try. Uh, if you've got a free arm on your sewing machine, it'd be quite easy to sew around there. I'm just going to press this. And in fact, I'm going to give it a little spray of best press. Because this isn't the kind of fabric that likes to press very easily because it's polyester and that's what it's be been designed to do. But if you do want to top stitch around there, just right next to the zip, then uh, that would be a nice finishing touch. So the zip right on the edge there. Or you could put a few hand, actually that one might be quite nice, just to put a, a running stitch by hand that you can actually see around the edge would be a nice finishing touch as well. There we go. So there's my pouch finished. Where's the zip gone? There you are. A little ribbon threaded through the end of the zip I think may look quite nice as well. But you can see it's quite a quick little bag to make but it looks actually I think it looks really expensive. I love the design of it um, and I've made them in florals. Where's my floral one gone? Um, I've made it in the um, like a, a, a foiled fabric with palm trees behind me. I've made quite a few of these. I just think they're really handy, really useful. Of course, you can use a laminated lining if you wanted to make it washproof as well. Um, and it can be as, as feminine or as masculine as you want it to look. So flowers or denim or um, any kind of fabric that you like. So I hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial. I hope you enjoyed making yours. And um, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe. I shall see you again very soon. Bye bye.